Thorlabs Vitran glass processors, LFS splicers and fibre cleavers such as the LDC401 use precision machined inserts to ensure that fibres or glass components are located on the fibre line of the unit. This video will discuss how to fit inserts into glass processors and LFS splicers. Typically, a top and a bottom insert need to be fitted in each fibre holding block on the unit. Bottom inserts have a V-groove which will position fibres on the fibre line of the unit. Top inserts have either a flat or a flat recess to provide a third point of contact. A large selection of insert sizes are available. Use the selection guide to identify the appropriate pair of inserts for your application. In some cases the inserts will hold the coating and in others the glass cladding. Place the bottom insert in the channel of the fibre holding block. Place the top insert part way into the channel of the lid. Close the lid while holding onto the insert to keep it in place. Slightly lift the lid so both the lower and upper inserts can be slid along their channels. Use a hex key or other straight edge to ensure that the ends of the inserts are flush with the end of the fibre holding block. Allow the magnets to fully close the lid. The lower insert is held in place with three set screws on the front of the fibre holding block. The upper insert is held in place with two set screws on the back of the fibre holding block lid. Inserts are fitted into the other fibre holding block on the unit in the same way. The inserts will then be fully installed and the unit is ready to use. The use of a transfer insert assembly maintains accurate fibre position registration as the fibre is moved from the cleaver to the glass processor or splicer. This allows precision fibre optic assemblies using fused optical components to be manufactured such as medical probes and sensing devices. A transfer insert assembly is made using a transfer clamp, a transfer insert and a graphite V-groove appropriate for the fibre type being used. Several different sizes of transfer insert are available. To learn how to assemble a transfer insert assembly, please see the separate video that describes that process in more detail. To use the transfer insert, rest it in the channel of the fibre holding block. Lift the back so that the insert lies flat in the channel. Now push the insert to slide it along the channel fully so that the reference ball on the transfer clamp is touching the reference surface on the unit. The insert should slide easily and not need to be forced. Using the same method as described earlier, place the upper insert into the lid of the fibre holding block. Close the lid while holding onto the insert so that it stays in place. Now, slightly lift the lid and slide the upper insert towards the transfer clamp. Stop when there is a gap of a few millimetres between them. Allow the lid to close fully. Tighten the set screws on the back of the lid. You will not need to tighten the screws on the front of the fibre holding block, as the transfer insert needs to be free to move in and out of the channel, enabling it to be transferred between machines. Special top inserts capable of holding an LED can be used for applications where end view illumination of the fibres is necessary. The LED is held in place using a set screw on the side of the insert. With an insert loaded into the bottom channel of the fibre holding block, lift the lid and place the top insert part way into the channel of the lid, ensuring that the D-shaped indent will be facing upwards when the lid is closed. Close the lid while holding on to the insert to keep it in place. Now slightly lift the lid and slide the upper insert backwards so that its back edge is level or slightly sub-flush with the back edge of the fibre holding block. Now tighten the two set screws on the rear of the lid to secure the upper insert in place. Once the insert is locked in place, open the lid. Guide the LED into the D-shaped indent. 
Lightly press the LED into the hole until the soft rounded front end of the LED slightly protrudes beyond the flat of the top insert. Then, using a 35 thou hex key, gently tighten the LED locking set screw. Do not over tighten or the LED could be damaged. For use in the other fibre holding block, the set screw which holds the LED will need to be moved to the other side. Carefully verify that the fibre holding block can rotate through its full range of motion without disturbing or fouling on the LED or the metalwork of the insert. Once in place, these LEDs will allow you to view the structure in the end view of your splicer or glass processor. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us either at techsupport at thorlabs.com or vitran.uk at thorlabs.com.